All right, everybody, welcome back. It's a, um, it's a big transition week for us in this class because what we're doing right now is we're moving on um, from the section of our class that's primarily focused on um, this guy in this book, Danny Kahneman, Thinking Fast and Slow. We're going to return um, to the very last section of this book that talks about two selves later in the class. But um, the bulk of this, the section that's really kind of more intensely judgment and decision-making focused, kind of classical judgment decision-making focused, uh, we are, we're moving on from. So I really hope that you enjoyed it. It's an incredible book. The good news is we're moving on to another very important, very influential researcher and another really great um, kind of popular press focused book, but that's very, very rigorous and very based on um, quality research. And that is this guy, Influence by Bob Cialdini. So a very different approach, um, but there is conveniently this excellent video, this excellent kind of bridge video of our soon to be new friend, Bob Cialdini, um, kind of talking about a quote that Kahneman gave and thinking about how that particular quote serves as a really nice bridge between these two different, um, different researchers and different kind of ways of thinking about human psychology. One is much more kind of economics and uh, in the field of judgment and decision-making, like focused and really foundational within that field. And Cialdini is much more um, in the kind of classical psychological persuasion literature. So I will I will have you watch that clip and then we'll come back and chat about one quick related effect that I that I just think is really interesting. Let's end with something that is part of your research, um, part of your book, um, but will help people live better lives. Yeah. And to that end, you quote the Nobel laureate Daniel Kahneman, who was asked to answer this question. What scientific concept, if appreciated properly, would most improve people's understanding of the world? You know, it ties in with persuasion. How did Dr. Kahneman answer that? It's interesting because he's normally associated with something called prospect theory, the idea that in, under conditions of uncertainty, we weight uh, losses more heavily than the possibility of gains. He didn't mention that as the thing that he thought was most important for all of us to know. Not the thing that won him the Nobel Prize. He said, nothing is as important as you think it is while you are thinking about it. Something he called the focusing illusion and something that we've been alluding to in this conversation. While you are focused on something, while you are thinking about something, it, its importance in your mind jumps, just skyrockets, and the downside cons or the, the downstream consequences of that are that you then search for information relevant to that particular concept, and you act in ways that are appropriate with the now more important uh, level of, of that concept in your mind. But nothing is as important as when you're paying attention to it. You can put, you easily rank things out of proportion to their true importance. That's right. We, we overvalue things that we are paying attention to. Okay, so what Cialdini and, and really Kahneman are talking about there is the focusing illusion, right? Which we talked about before. Um, but I want to talk briefly now about uh, an effect that is just like a nice thing to know exists in the world to kind of calm yourself down every once in a while. But also I think of it as a very specific form of the focusing illusion. And it's called the spotlight effect. The spotlight effect is um, associated with the researcher Tom Gilovich, who has just an incredible... All of his studies are incredible. If you ever want to just read some kind of really creative um, psychological studies, then I would say just look up whatever Tom Gilovich is working on, because it's probably um, probably pretty interesting. And this one certainly meets that bar. The spotlight effect kind of starts with the premise that um, we are all the main character, right? The leading man or woman in our, the movie of our own lives. That's how we experience the world. But in the lives of every other person, we're like a background extra or maybe a supporting character, best case scenario. And yet we tend to think of ourselves as somehow 
um, kind of like more central in the lives of every other person because it's just it's just our perspective. And that's because if there's one thing that we're all guilty of spending a lot of time thinking about, it's ourselves. We're all a little bit self preoccupied and that's just human nature. And so if you start with that premise that we're all preoccupied about ourselves and what's going on in our own lives, and that causes us to think that, to overfocus, to overweight the importance of ourselves and our actions in the lives of others, you can see how that would cause people to make some, some kind of errors of prediction. And so what Tom Gilovich does is this really creative thing where he brings people together. So in the lab, they are running this study. They tell students, look, we're running a study. What we're going to do is we're going to bring you uh, to the lab in groups and you're going to complete these surveys. Uh, what they did was in each of those groups, they would randomly select one student and that student would get a uh, time that the study was going to start that was five minutes later than the time that everyone else received. So when that student showed up, when that student showed up late, it was like, hey guys, here I am. Uh, the research assistant would say, well, everyone else is already here. You've shown up late. And because you've shown up late, what we're going to do is we're going to ask you to wear this bright yellow Barry Manilow shirt. That's what you have to do now in order to complete the study. I don't actually know the details of this, but in many, many, many large um, public or private universities, it's like a requirement for uh, especially like an intro site class or maybe an intro marketing class that you would complete these studies. And so, or you're getting paid. And so there's there's a pretty strong incentive that you would want to complete the study. So anyway, um, you have to put on this Barry Manilow shirt and that's the requirement in order to complete the study. There's actually a great line in the paper where the authors tell you that they did in fact pretest and Barry Manilow is not considered to be uh, particularly cool by college student, uh, by college students. So once the person put the shirt on and walked into the room, the experimenter would change his or her mind, the research assistant and would then pull the person out of the room after they'd walked in and tell them, you know what, since you're so late, you don't have to complete the study. Um, it's important to keep in mind that throughout this whole process, the student is like, oh my God, there's a spotlight on me. Everyone is really focused on this stupid, bright yellow Barry Manilow shirt that I'm wearing. And the people wearing the shirt, in fact, tended to think that not only was um, was the shirt just very embarrassing to them, but that the majority of people in the room would notice. In fact, about half of the people in the room, um, they estimated when they left, the other people who, who were on time, when they left, they would remember the student who walked in and they would remember that that person had, um, had been wearing this really embarrassing shirt. In actuality, it was closer to 25% of people. So the people who walked in wearing the shirts thought that about half of a room took notice of the very embarrassing thing that happened, really only about a quarter of people did. So in other words, people are really overestimating the extent to which other people noticed them and, and took any kind of mind of, of the decisions that they were making. Now, consistent with Kahneman's statement, right? Let's, let's think back to it. Nothing is as important as you think it is while you are thinking about it. So there's gonna be one moderating factor Think about that statement again and see if you can guess what it is. I'll say it one more time. Nothing is as important as you think it is while you are thinking about it. So what could we do about this situation to maybe make people a little bit more accurate in terms of, in terms of thinking about how important, how central uh, they and their choices are to the lives of others? Well, the thing that ends up mattering here is time. If you add time, the more time that a person wore the shirt before they walked into the room, the more they kind of acclimated to it, the less central it was to their thinking at the moment. So it's no longer while they are thinking about it. And the less likely they were to think that other that a majority of other people were going to notice it. So specifically, their estimates decreased a little bit. They still overestimated. They still, um, excuse me, they still thought that um, more than 25% of people would notice. But they didn't double it. They weren't horribly inaccurate. And so the spotlight kind of softened ever so slightly. So with that um, kind of forefront in our minds, I think it's just a nice thing to know. You know, when you have one of those days where it turns out there was lettuce in your teeth and no one told you, 
um, or some other embarrassing thing happens and you kind of let it ruin your whole day, there's there's really no need to do that. We've all had the experience of, you know, confessing to someone about this horrible, embarrassing thing that happened that they witnessed and they either have no memory of it or they're kind of like, oh, I kind of remember that, but you really need to let that go. Um, no one thinks about that anymore. You can kind of tell yourself, oh, this is a spotlight effect. I, I don't matter that much in that way to everyone else in the world. And so that embarrassing thing is not a huge deal. It's fine. We're all just living our lives and it's cool. Uh, and, and that's it. Good, good bridge topic, I hope. Um, thanks, everybody, and see you again soon. Bye.